I say, quite an entrance. I believe you fared slightly better than the skylight. <laughs> I rather prefer opening doors myself, but your approach does have a certain flair. Hmm. Well then, you must be the new employee. Pity about the last one. We seem to go through employees faster than hankies at a head gold convention. And I should know. Ah, you're staring. You've never seen a talking nose before. Well, it's a long and interesting story. But let's not waste time. Here's the situation. Our institute was once a haven of scientific advancement where Dr. Sulphur and other hybrid creatures could conduct research. That is, until the Elemutants came. They were one of Sulphur's experiments, a nasty new type of creature, half bush parakeet and half mutated apple. The good doctor thought he could make them into cuddly house pets, but these little pests are all rotten to the core. Oh, look, you simply have to stop the Elemutants. Just use what's left of the computer to locate where the problems are. Then go anywhere you want in the Institute. Fix the problems in the animals' lairs, relabel the chemicals in the diner, and finish up a few experiments in the lab. With a bit of luck, the Sulphur Institute will once again be a spearhead of scientific progress. Or at least the elevators will start working again. Then perhaps Dr. Danger is my middle name, Sulphur, will make an appearance. It could happen. This rickety old chem cart and I go wherever you go, so you can always ask one of us for help. You can also click on the handy question mark on the chem cart and get some very useful information. And to get the update on what you've done or what still needs to be done, just click on the computer. All right now, let's not delay, or the Institute may be lost forever! My gosh, that sounds dramatic! Well, it's a pretty sad situation here in the diner. You see, the Elemutants have messed with the minds of all these creatures. They can remember everything except the names of their chemicals. They need you to help them. I think they're in trouble. Here's how it stands. You'll need to identify four unknowns to turn off the alarm for the diner. Once you have identified a chemical, it will show up on the shelves. Those down there in the front. Click on a character to get a question about a chemical. Then listen to the answer. After six questions, the menu board will display some possible names. Now, you can listen to up to 12 questions to make a choice, and you will have two chances at the board to get it right. Good luck! Everybody will be happier when things have been put right. Especially me. I can go home. How do? Bob here. Basic Bob. If it's basic, it belongs to me. Alkaline type bases, that is. I've sized up this challenge, and it's pretty, well, basic. I hope you can meet it. Have I ever seen it being used? Well, have you ever seen anyone use smelling salts? Well, where does it come from? Mostly from coal refineries. Does it have any nicknames? Old-time chemists call it alkaline air. Young chemists just call it stinky. 
Is it powerful? A good whiff will knock you down. Do I have any around the house? You do, if you have an antique refrigerator. It was used as a cooling agent before 1940. Phew! Have I ever smelled it? Check out your nearest wet diaper. I was all over this one, but ammonia just slipped by me. Great job, great job! But don't get a big head about it. There are more chemicals to identify in order to turn off the alarm for the diner. Here is one now. Dr. Sulphur has worked an entire lifetime building up this lab. And just look at it. What a dump! The experiment descriptions on the white board seem to be intact, but you need to verify that the experiments work. You have the chem cart for all the equipment and chemicals. I know you can do it. At least, I hope you can do it. Here is your task. Complete at least one experiment from each of the types listed on the white board. When you have completed an experiment, you'll see that it is checked off automatically. Complete four experiments, one from each type, to turn off the alarm for the lab. The tension is terrible. I hope it lasts. To pick an exp... Wow! Master of Gas Explosions should be your title. With proper control, you could fly a rocket with that mixture. Or maybe even grill a steak. Come to think of it, I'm rather hungry.
it's not Krakatoa, not even Vesuvius, but it's a pretty fine volcano nonetheless. Actually, volcanoes work on an entirely different principle, but this little lab volcano appears just the same, throwing off gases and sputtering pieces. I often do the same myself after dinner. Oh my, mind your head. Welcome my friend, you have ventured into Basic Bob's Basement, better known as the publishing division of the Institute. As the cat who represents all those base chemicals, you'd expect me to be working on experiments with stuff like soap and baking soda. But I was never very good with lab experiments, so Dr. Sulphur put me to work on creating the Institute's chemistry guidebook. I was just about to send my book to press when I found those stinky little Ella mutants. I am fu- You must- Intelligence. I could use you on my staff. Come back anytime. <laughs> oh, finally, the permanent press cycle was a roller coaster. But I thought the heavy duty cycle would kill me. At least I didn't dissolve. I can be very tough on drain pipes. <laughs> So you kids, come out of those heating ducts! That's an order! Hmm, I sense you are a benign visitor. Perhaps an assistant. Well, I could use a little help. You see, my offspring, along with their nanny, non-Metallica, appeared to be trapped in this heating system, which shows serious signs of illamutant damage. It is past mealtime. The little fellas are hungry. And they have no metal to eat! Even my most impressive threats will not make them dig their way out! Non-Metallica, of course, is no help! 
She couldn't recognize a metal if it fell on her. Well, it's all crystal clear now. There is only one. All right. See those doors over there? Click on the door anytime to guide me to the metal. But first, I urge a little caution. You must use the tools and the spray bottles to figure out which passageway contains metal. There are two piles of material in each passageway. Use the multimeter to find out whether a sample is magnetic or conducts electricity. You can also put acid, base, or water on the piles using the spray bottle. But be careful! Once you've dissolved or destroyed a... The electrical conductivity for that material is high. The electrical conductivity for that material is high. The electrical conductivity for that material is low. A fine choice. You made me proud. Let's move on. The cobalt chloride solution turned blue, therefore, this chamber is dry. The cobalt chloride solution turned blue, therefore, this chamber is dry. The cobalt chloride solution turned pink, therefore, it is wet in this chamber. Conductivity for that material is low. The electrical conductivity for that material is high. The electrical conductivity for that material is high. Conductivity for that material is high. A brilliant choice! How noble of you to select a fine, noble metal for me. Let's proceed to the environmental chambers on the double. Hit her, her, hit her, her, her. The electrical conductivity is unknown in this chamber. The cobalt chloride solution turned blue, therefore this chamber is dry. The cobalt chloride solution turned pink, therefore it is wet in this chamber. little metal mouths we have overcome the obstacles we have defeated the enemy and my children are safe at last 
I am officially happy! Oh, boy! Hey, buddy, you don't happen to have a bit of neon on you, do you? I'm starving! Hey there! Slide into Tar Blob's Grease and Go, the only synthetic, organic chemical shop on the planet. I'm in a smoldering heap of trouble, my friend. I am the Sulfur Institute's official supplier of carbon-based molecules, providing organic molecules to those in need. My molecules go forth into animals and plants, plastics, Texas crude, even chemical fertilizers and pesticides. And every molecule I make is 100% organic, carbon in every one. But right now, I'm slipping on my orders. My friend, an evil force has been among us. A bunch of smelly, rotten mutants are threatening to damage my reputation. In the old day, it is a cinch. Here's what happens. Customers come to that porthole up there. And they like to get their orders right away. You know my slogan. Your slime, on time, or we'll refund your dime. Look through the- Hello! I need another container of cow exhaust for my latest symphonic creation. Now that I have been visited by the Ella Mutants, my calliope is completely out of tune. I've captured the notes that my instrument should make on my tape recorder. All you have to do is retune the keys. You did say you wanted to help, didn't you? Yes, of course you want to help. So just retune the keys in the correct order by assigning the right gas knobs to the right keys. If you can fix the calliope, it will play a fantastic song for you. And we will have proved our artistic and chemical superiority to the Elamutans. So they will leave me alone and I can return to my songwriting. Now, let's tune. It's easy. Just click on my tape recorder and it will play the notes. <laughs>
suppose you're here to see my spectacular fish tank with my patented aquarium feeder. Dr. Sulfur made me the coordinator of indigestion and all other things acidic here at the Institute. And I, yes I, am conducting ongoing research into the digestive behavior of marine animals. Real, very important work. My TetraWiz feeder guarantees that each feeding contains a perfect balance of chemicals, so each creature gets just the right amount of what they need. A careful mixture of ions for my elegant eel, some hard to chew insolubles for the distinctive looking crab, the perfect acid base combo for my splendid litmus plant, and just the right amount of solubles for my darling fish. See how the precious little animals and plants get away from my tank, you vermin! Oh no! That devious Alamutant! Look what it's done! Don't just sit there! Quick! Add some chemicals to fix the formula, or my creatures will die! I know if you can figure out which chemicals to add to the mixture to get it back in balance, those nasty little mutants will leave me alone for good! The indicator light will go from green to yellow to flashing orange as the situation gets more desperate. Once it turns to red, it's too late! Oh, and my creatures will be just a memory! Trust me, you can rise to the occasion! Look at the feeder and figure out which valve has been turned by the Elemutant. Click on the feed button to see how the changes affect the balance of the fish tank. Be careful and watch for color changes in the animals. When they change color, they are in danger of dying. Oh, those poor things. Now, figure out which types of chemicals the animals need. Look below the fish tank to find the bottles containing the right chemicals and add those to the feeder. You can use the question mark to get more information about the chemicals, the fish tank, and other objects in the scene. Or you can pick the nose if you need more help. <laughs> Press the feed button when you think you have the right chemical. You have saved my precious creatures and my brilliant experiment. The good Dr. Sulfur will be thrilled. I know I am.
got the inks right. Great job. Now let's try to put this experiment to work. Check out the equipment and tools section on the chem cart to find a message from Dr. Selfa. You can do this. Just follow the instructions. Just slosh a Just slosh a little of that iron chloride on the page and let's see what the old man has to say. Could be fan mail from some flounders. You got the inks right. Great job. Now let's try to put this experiment to work. Check out the equipment and tools section on the chem cart to find a message from Dr. Selfa. A successful alloy. Well done. Now find the mold on the chem cart. Pour the alloy into it to make a little... Congratulations. You are a true scientist. You completed all four experiments. We're so happy for you. Hooray! If I had hands, I'd clap. Charming. A weapon of war. You know, you humans have been making these silly spears out of bronze for 5,000 years. It's about time you put them away so we can have a little peace and quiet, don't you think so? Look, these... Ooh, I just get all tangly when I get near a salt. That's why Dr. Sulfa named me Saltina. Help me sort out this unknown salt. What's so special about it? It's so special that your body has assigned a set of taste buds especially for it. It adds a lot of flavor to food. Is it dangerous? Not really, unless you're a slug or an ice cube. What does it look like? Under a microscope, you'll see perfect little crystals. Where can I find some? Go to Kansas or Louisiana and dig down about 800 feet.
Does it dissolve in water? So easily that one gallon of water will dissolve almost three pounds of it. Have I ever touched any of it? Oh, sure. Every time you swim in the ocean. Oh, sodium chloride. It should have been crystal clear to me. Great job, great job. But don't get a big head about it. There are more chemicals to identify in order to turn off the alarm for the diner. Here is one now. I am Tar Blob, and as you can see, I find big, juicy, organic molecules just irresistible. With a little help from you and my friends, we can identify this mystery chemical. Where could I get some? It's usually sold in paint stores. Hey, can you tell me its formula? It looks similar to the formula of a common base, but it's not one. What would happen if I drank some? You would go blind. How is it made? By heating wood in a metal container, it gets its nickname, wood alcohol, from the... What will happen if I mix it with water? Not much. It's partially soluble in water and looks just like it. Ooh, is it flammable? Yes, and explosive too, under the right conditions. Of course it was methyl alcohol. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Great job, great job. But don't get a big head about it. There are more chemicals to identify in order to turn off the alarm for the diner. Here is one now. Ay, ay, ay! Small molecules put a real zip in moleculitas tango. I won't sit still until we solve this molecular puzzle. What's it look like? Usually, as a gas, it's invisible. But when it's real cold, it looks like snow. Is it safe to eat? You better believe it. You swallow some with each gulp from a can of soda. Is it dangerous? It's one of the main causes of global warming. Other than that, it's pretty tame stuff. Does anyone like this stuff? Oh, yes. Plants just love it. Hey, is this a cool chemical or what? It's a gas. <laughs> well, most of the time it is, unless you're below minus 78 degrees Celsius. Then it's a solid. Wow. Could I make an acid with it? Oh, sure, sure, sure. It dissolves in water and makes a weak acid. Carbon dioxide! Of course! It was fizzing around in my head all the time! Fantastic! You foiled the other mutants and turned off the diner alarm in the office. I'm so happy I could sneeze, but I won't. Splendid! Splendid! Good job! I'll send out the sulfur wonder rope and we'll pull you out!